to uh, do my best to help those of you that are struggling with the overhead squat to better understand how you can work with the movement to, to be able to perform it. And the overhead squat is an area that really illustrates what I consider one of the most important and least discussed principles that relates to exercise and training. And that is the law of individual differences. The law of individual differences allows for the fact that there's differences between each individual. And those differences can relate to lever lengths, arm, trunk, leg length, also relates to uh, particular strengths and weaknesses. And it's gonna relate greatly in the area of mobility. And some are gonna be more mobile than others. So let's look at the overhead squat and some of the common uh, difficulties that you may be having and some strategies that you can use to improve upon with the ultimate goal of being able to perform the overhead squat. Uh, first of all, we're going to do an overhead squat with two kettlebells, or I'm going to show that, and that's going to be more relative to the Olympic lifting in the sense that we have the load fixed with two arms fixed and you're sort of on this frontal plane. Okay, so that's the overhead squat with two kettlebells. So you have the kettlebells locked out. You set your stance. And you move into the squat. That's the overhead squat with two kettlebells. However, that's not gonna be the focus for this. And the beauty of the kettlebell is that it allows us to train the overhead squat just with one side of the body. And that's a huge advantage and a huge benefit to improving your movement quality. The double overhead squat is very similar in terms of your alignment and demands of the body to doing an overhead squat with a bar. And so the barbell or double kettlebell overhead squat really is not an appropriate exercise for many people. And I would say uh, this is one of the drawbacks of the popularity of CrossFit training where it's done a lot of great and bringing Olympic lifting into a more mainstream awareness and helping to grow that. The downside of that is many people start getting into the Olympic lifting when they're already mature adults and you know mid 30s, 40s, or even older. And the problem is at that point, your body is already set in terms of your structure. So Olympic lifting is a very specialized sport that requires specialized flexibility and so someone that starts in their mid thirties is never gonna be able to be a world champion. And so what we don't wanna see is people performing movements when they're not really, their body is not able to get into the position. And so that creates compensations, which will eventually lead to injuries if you continue to push it, okay? So that's where the kettlebell overhead squat comes into play, okay? Because we can improve our flexibility as adults. However, there's different kinds of flexibility. So we can change the, the muscular tissue to some degree, even to extreme degrees with, with practice. However, the structure of the bones and the joints, we're not going to, to make changes there as, as a mature adult. So you're basically working against an impossible, impossible task, okay? So what we, what we see with the kettlebell overhead squat as differentiating from say the Olympic is that now it's one side. When you have double, you basically, your only option is really to take out the slack through kind of opening here and then through the hips and being able to, to drop down into that overhead position. Now, if you have the range of motion, you can get there. 
if you don't have the range of motion, what's going to happen is that there's compensation and then it's where well, you don't want to drop the bar. So you're kind of fighting and, and contorting your body in all these ways just to get the rep. And it's a bad rep. So if you can't do it well, don't do it at all. With the overhead squat, we not only have this range of motion to play with, but now it gives us this transverse, okay, this rotation. I can open up. And so whereas here, that might be my sticking point from here. Now I can open a little and that can get me a little further. Okay. And that's really what we're going to learn how to work with, with the kettlebell overhead squat. Uh, so the first point is your stance. You have to find the stance that is really comfortable for your body. So if you're just walking down the street and you stop where your feet are, that's probably your natural stance, okay? Uh, this idea that you must keep the toes forward and forcing everyone into this very narrow framework. I don't agree with that, okay? Now I push my knees out, but now I'm overcompensating here to get into the hips, that's okay, but that's not a natural position. I couldn't just jump into that position, right? So for me, if I'm more comfortable here, I can sit, well, now you can fight from here, okay? You can move from here, you can dance from here. You have your center of mass over your base, okay? And that's really important. So you gotta find your stance that the knees are staying over the feet, Okay, and you can drop your hips down inside, and now you have stability. You're not having to twist or come up onto your toes here, okay? So that's individual for you. And once you have your stance, now you have this overhead, so a press. The press is gonna be a prerequis prerequisite. You can lock that out. Now from here, you don't have to face forward the whole time. A flexible person, that they're gonna be facing forward, and you're gonna see that range, however, most people are gonna feel like a bit of a corkscrew. You're opening up, opening up and feel like now you can kind of sit, sit into that. And even further, if you feel like you've used the, the limit of your rotation here, now we have this lateral flexion component, which is also possible. So maybe I, I get stuck here, I wanna go deeper, Okay, almost like a side press. You can watch my side press videos, okay, from here. And now that enables because the requirement is that you have the combined center of mass vertically aligned over your base of support, which is the area of your base, okay? And so I have the mass of the kettlebell, your physiological center of mass here in your lower bell, and you wanna have that alignment. Okay? So even if I'm here, I still have that alignment. And if this, if this enables me to get into the position, that's perfectly okay. You have the ability to brace. So you have this elbow here, you can brace, you can brace in the floor. You wanna keep your eyes on the bell. Okay. So bringing overhead can be a clean and press push, press, snatch, get it overhead, lock it out. Okay, so stability. Now, this hand's gonna counterbalance. I want you to look up at the kettlebell. When you're learning, it's really important that you keep track of this because if you lose control here, you wanna see what's happening. You don't wanna be looking somewhere else and maybe drop that bell. Okay, once you master the position, you can even do it with your eyes closed if you want to. But for now, eyes on the bell. This hand's gonna counterbalance. And now I come down. Now, if I feel like here, I'm sort of locking up, I can turn a little bit, turn to the kettlebell. And now I'm in that bottom position. Keep your knees over your feet. Don't allow something to kind of collapse in here. Keep the knees pushing out, opening. And you see that this is over, okay? I can brace my elbow in the bottom. Now drive straight up with the exhale. So it's inhale, exhale. Now, if that's still not enough to get you in that bottom position, you feel that by turning, you're still stuck. Now you think of that seesaw 
a little bit of lateral. So you can even get into that lateral, like a bent press, side press idea. And, but you see that the, the load is still vertically over your center of mass and base. Okay. Set your stance, counterbalance, eyes on the bell, drop down. If you need to open, open a little bit. If you reach the limit there, now I can tilt. I can tilt it. Okay, and naturally the weight is going to be a little bit more on the other leg to counterbalance because I have the, the weight on one side. And drive up. Okay, so it's not completely bilateral. I have the load in one side. Naturally, your body is going to naturally compensate counterbalance, okay, without having to force it, it's just going to naturally kind of seesaw there, okay, and I have that brace. A couple other challenges in the overhead squat. Uh, some of it is physiological, okay. There's also going to be a mental component, whereas your self-image, how you are used to using your body or how you believe, okay, we are not what we think, we are what we believe. So, if you believe that this is your maximal range of motion and that's what, what you've been existing as, you get here and your body locks up. It's like, I don't go down there. I don't belong down there, right? So uh, you wanna get back to that ancestral, okay? You wanna get back to that primitive more than a hundred years ago, our ancestors and more than a few hundred years ago before there was industry, okay? And we didn't have, you know, living rooms and couches and chairs and car seats and toilets and all these modern accruedments. This is how you sit by the campfire. Okay, this is how you went out to the bathroom out in the woods. Okay, this is the squat. It's something that we naturally understand how to do. Okay, so this is your potential, is to come all the way down for your individual body. So let's say you're getting stuck. What I wanna do there is you're gonna use an anchor for the bottom, for the bottom hand. Okay, the anchor can be a heavy kettlebell like I'm using here, uh, or anything that is anchored, okay? Something that is firmly to the ground. We don't want a light kettlebell that's gonna drag. You want something that's gonna stick. Now, I have the kettlebell overhead, I squat down, and so I get stuck here. What I want to do is use this bottom kettlebell as a handle to actively pull, 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 pull myself down. Okay, reintroduce, remember that pattern that you could do as a little child and somehow your body has forgot. It's not a new skill. It's just a memory that you need to revisit. Okay, and so you don't want to be searching for this anchor. Okay, if I have the kettlebell here, I don't want to be searching where is it. I look for it, now I lose control. That's an injury, okay? I need to know where it is. So I like the, the adage, who feels it knows it. Who feels it knows it, okay? So the eyes can be deceived. Your tactile is not going to be deceived. Okay, so you touch. So. My eyes are here. I want to know that the kettlebell is exactly where I need it to be. So I use my feet. Okay, a blind person here can still, I know it's here against my foot because I'm touching it. Now I can just track this bottom hand, palm forward along the inside of the leg. And I know that as I reach down, I know that the kettlebell's right there. Okay, so there's my handle and now, I can pull myself down. And from the side, you're actually, you're actually sitting back a little bit. You're using this as a handle so you can sit back such that if you didn't have it, you would fall. And that's gonna help you to be able to drive down and sit back and just get comfortable, okay? Prove to your body that you can do it. Bring it overhead. Set. Now, 
Inhale into the belly as you're coming down. Fill this up like an inner tube. You get stuck, grab that. Use a little bit of a turn, a little bit of a tilt. Pull yourself down to that bottom position. Just hold it there for a bit. Breathe. Now release and drive it up. Okay. So that may be very useful for you as well. And then the last point, you need to really work on improving that shoulder girdle and you know the musculature, okay? So the upper back and the muscles of the shoulder girdle so that you can kind of open up a little bit more than what you're doing now. So you get a rope or a towel if you feel very stiff, even a band and some circumductions. Elbows locked, keep the chest high, breathe. You want smooth, you want smooth. You don't want grind. It's a ball and socket joint, it's to roll. You just need to oil it. And you may have to do many reps and until, it, until it smooths out and then moving your hands in a little bit more. Okay, it's closer grip. And again, many, many reps, okay? The other thing you can do is a figure eight, a little bit wider stance, keeping the elbows locked and rolling. Breathe in through the first half, breathe out through the last half. You can start getting more body English. Okay, and reverse it. Okay, so these are some great mobility for the upper back and shoulder. And now let's bring it back with that mobility. Bring it back into the overhead squat. Lock it out, eyes on the bell. Set your stance, counterbalance. Inhale down into your belly. Stable at the bottom. Exhale up. And then you, rep, you can rep it from here. And so, okay. that's a dissection of the kettlebell overhead squat. I hope this helps you. Leave your questions and requests, and I'll see you for the next one.